And a lot of people out there, you know, they're getting into macho madness really super strong. And macho madness, yeah. Growing, 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 and more seductive than sex. You know, his name has never been uttered again out of Vince McMahon's mouth. You know, if that's true, maybe the reason he never, maybe that's why he never went back there. Wrestling is full of shadowy tales, rumors, and whispers about some crazy stories. Stories that fans have heard about, but perhaps never had a chance to hear all the details. But join us now as WrestleMania looks at one of wrestling's biggest unsolved mysteries in urban legends, the Randy Savage and Stephanie McMahon romance. Did they or didn't they? It's a story that continues to get more and more attention every year without any definite proof, which only seems to add to the controversy. Did Macho Man Randy Savage have an affair with Stephanie McMahon? An affair that kept him from ever returning to the WWE? As we'll see, it's a mystery heavy on hearsay and circumstantial evidence, but nothing conclusive. Although Randy Savage was a key figure in the WWF's rise to success in the 80s, by the 90s, Vince McMahon saw him as an aging star whose best days were far behind him. McMahon made the decision to put Savage as a color commentator, despite Savage's request to wrestle full time. When Savage asked to work a program with Shawn Michaels and help get the young star over, McMahon turned him down flat. But by 1994, Savage had had enough. When his contract expired, he jumped ship to WCW, where he resolved to prove he had lots left to contribute to the business. McMahon had been stung by Hulk Hogan's departure for WCW, so when the Macho Man gave McMahon his word he wouldn't leave for WCW, it must have hurt Vinnie Mac even more when Savage bailed with no notice. Behind the scenes, some believe Savage held a grudge against McMahon, not only for grounding him, but for snubbing Randy's dad, Angelo Poffo, when Poffo asked Randy to help him get into a Legends Battle Royal years before. Savage asked for what he saw as a small favor, only to be turned down. According to the book Titan's Sinking, Savage was fiercely loyal to his family, and it devastated him that he was not able to give his father that final swan song with his contemporaries. He mused that he was one of the biggest stars in the company, and yet Vince couldn't even do him one small favor on the throwaway house show. From now on, it's just business. He told his bemused brother, fuck the WWF. When Savage left the promotion, Vince McMahon announced on Raw, at this time, obviously conspicuous by his absence, is the Macho Man Randy Savage. And I'd like to announce that Randy Savage has been unable to sign a contract with the World Wrestling Federation. Not unable to, rather to come to terms with the World Wrestling Federation for a new contract. But Randy, I know you're out there listening, and on behalf of all of us here at the World Wrestling Federation, all of your fans, and certainly me, the number one fan, I'd like to say thank you for all your positive contributions to the World Wrestling Federation. Thank you, Randy Savage, for all the wonderful memories for so many years here in the World Wrestling Federation. We wish you nothing but the best. Godspeed and good luck. Vince was disappointed that Savage bailed on him, but he apparently grew angry when he learned Savage had talked to Slim Jim into taking their sponsorship deal from WWF to WCW. McMahon reportedly lost millions when Slim Jim jumped with the Macho Man, as it was a time when the WWF was hard pressed for cash. Regardless, business is business, so when Savage teased he might be interested in returning to the WWF around 96, insiders were shocked at Vince's adamant refusal to take him back, with the WWF kingpin warning his staff never to mention Savage's name in his presence. The story would lead to fans and insiders wondering what McMahon's motivation was for his harsh stance on Savage. The mystery of McMahon's malice only grew as the years passed. By 2001, a slew of former WWE and WCW stars had returned to the WWE following WCW's demise, but not Randy Savage, leading to people to wonder what was going on. By 2004, something specific began to be discussed. A story, if true, would explain Vince's vendetta against Savage. Wrestling News.co's Corey Jacobs has written an excellent timeline of the story, chronicling when it first showed up online. According to Jacobs, the Savage McMahon rumor started in 2004 in the Death Valley Driver message board, and Jacobs details how. 
The Savage McMahon rumor started on September 16, 2004, when posted user G. Gordon Liddy wrote, McMahon had his way with Stephanie, she was about 14 then, back in 94-95, and that Vince found out, and that was the true ending for Macho Man in WWF. The user never provided facts to back up the rumor, and he was wrong about her age. She turned 18, not 14, in September 94. The thread has been deleted, but it has now been archived at this link, so you can now see for yourself when the rumor got started. The link will be posted in the description below. But like many rumors, there are many gaps in logic and outright wrong information. One of the biggest being the constant claim that Stephanie was 14 when the alleged relationship began. Stephanie would have been 17 or 18 when this happened, but even so, James Dixon notes in Titan Sinking that the age of consent in Connecticut at the time was 16, so there was nothing illegal had anything happened. Again, legally speaking, any alleged affair would not have been underage, as it's often been described, but the age difference has raised eyebrows and could have made McMahon livid. The story has picked up steam over the years, with fans noting Savage never returned to the WWE while he was alive, and noting Savage did not go into the WWE Hall of Fame until years after his death. Let's hear what some of the Macho Man's colleagues had to say about the situation. In his memoir, The Hardcore Truth, Bob Holly writes, Vince is a businessman first and foremost, so even when someone screws him over, if he feels he can make money with them, he'll put the differences aside and work with them. But he never worked with Randy again. There have been rumors going around for years involving Vince's daughter, Stephanie, and Randy. I won't say anything other than Randy was pretty friendly with her. In the book Titan Sinking, James Dixon notes, Savage's ex-girlfriend Stephanie Bellas, who previously performed in WCW alongside him as Gorgeous George, added credence to the story when recounting the reason the pair broke up. He wanted to have a three-way with me and my sister, she recalled. He wanted us all three to live in a house together. My sister was only 17 years old at the time. Bellas herself was only 23 when they started dating. Savage, it seemed, had a predilection for younger women. What of Savage's brother Lani Poffo? Poffo has denied anything happened between Savage and Stephanie, but during an episode of his podcast, The Genius Cast, he said, I have absolutely no idea if the urban legend is true. Like I said, if it were true, I wouldn't tell you because it's nobody else's business. There is only one other person who knows for sure, and that is Stephanie McMahon. Randy is not here and she is not talking, so let's give him the benefit of the doubt and just talk about something else. Dave Meltzer discussed McMahon's refusal to bring the Macho Man back in WWE. When Randy Savage passed away in 2011, Meltzer wrote, During the Monday Night Wars period, McMahon often said he would welcome Savage back, but would never welcome Hogan back. Savage, along with Sting and Ric Flair and later Bill Goldberg, were consistently the biggest ratings movers for WCW during the Monday Night Wars, with Savage averaging moving quarter hour ratings from 0.3 to 0.4 points per appearance. McMahon for the past decade had refused to listen to any ideas regarding bringing Savage back, even for guest appearance roles that didn't even require him wrestling, even though a short-term Savage return would have had strong nostalgia value. This certainly matches other stories of Vince's refusal to bring Savage back to the company, but no answer has ever been addressed. All sorts of rumors spread about why McMahon, who brought back men who had sued him and tried to bury the company, was adamant about never doing business with Savage. Looking at the situation, we have a talented wrestler and a proven draw who some claim Vince McMahon refused to bring back. As many people have noted throughout the years, Vince McMahon not only brought back people who have allegedly held him up for money, but brought back Bret the Hitman Hart, an individual who not only spit in Vince's face, but punched him. Fans keep coming back to the question, what could Savage have done that was so bad that McMahon refused to bring him back? The Stephanie McMahon answer seems so plausible that it's become accepted as gospel by some. Despite the hearsay and circumstantial evidence, an argument can be made that there are other reasons for why Savage never returned to WWE, reasons that poke major holes in this urban legend. Bruce Pritchard, who worked closely with Vince McMahon as an executive in the 90s and early 2000s, said Savage came close to returning to the WWF in 96. It's true, Randy and I talked and we had gone back and forth on a contract and then it all fell apart. I think we were far apart on money and dates. At that time, Vince wasn't big on limited number of dates for talent. You are either under contract or you're not, and Randy wanted so many dates, so it just got crossways at some point, and I'm the one who had to deliver the message. This is certainly plausible. 
This wasn't the only time Savage had dealings with the WWE. A review of the early 2000s reveals Savage had some contact with the promotion. In fact, according to more than one source, it was discovered that Savage praised WWE and Vince McMahon during interviews in 2000, 2001, and 2003. Randy Savage was interviewed by WWE Magazine in 2003 to discuss the passing of Miss Elizabeth and promote his rap album. It's unlikely there was much heat between Savage and WWE at that point in 2003. Unfortunately, things went south after some comments from Triple H. Lanny Poffo recalled, Triple H had done an interview with a magazine and they said, What do you think of Hulk Hogan and the Macho Man? He said they are great, but they are dinosaurs. Eventually, Hulk Hogan didn't mind being called a dinosaur, but Randy Savage took big exception to it. In typical fashion, the Macho Man went off on Triple H online via his members-only podcast, promising to slap Triple H around and steal his girlfriend Stephanie. When you blink, I'm gonna steal your girlfriend. How's that? I'm gonna take your babe. I'm gonna take Stephanie McMahon and take her a ride around the block. And I might give her back, but I may not. Some see the podcast as Savage being Savage, but it apparently angered Triple H, Stephanie, and possibly Vince to the point where Savage became persona non grata for some time. This alone could explain Savage's absence from the WWE. As for the Hall of Fame ban, consider what Sports Illustrated's Justin Barrasso wrote in 2015. McMahon actually reached out to Savage in 2010, but neither man had been willing to bend. McMahon wanted to induct only the Macho Man into the Hall of Fame, while Savage refused to go in without his father and his brother. Fans have yet to hear anything from Stephanie McMahon. At one point, the Billion Dollar Princess was reportedly writing a memoir, but that has yet to materialize. The subject has never been addressed in public. Did something happen between Stephanie McMahon and Randy Savage? If so, was this enough to keep McMahon and Savage apart? If so, why did the McMahon family relent and have Savage inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame? Has time healed whatever wounds existed, or was it a case of nothing happening between Stephanie and Randy, except in the overactive minds of some wrestling fans? But there you have it guys, a look into the Randy Savage and Stephanie McMahon urban legend. After hearing the details, what do you really think happened? Let us know in the comments down below. Let us know of any other unsolved mysteries or urban legends that you might want us to look into. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.